Hello, everyone. My name is S. Julianne Lloyd. I am a MIS bariatric surgeon at Belo. And I'll be talking today about predictive factors um, that might indicate patients could develop reflux after bariatric surgery. I would like to first start by thanking the committee for inviting me to give this talk. Um, I do not have any relevant disclosures at this time. More than 40% of bariatric patients or patients with obesity also suffer from reflux. And the underlying pathology has been studied in uh, patients. So in this particular study, they've looked at healthy asymptomatic volunteers who had either normal or increased waist circumference. And using biopsies and imaging, they were able to identify that obesity has been linked to an increase in the, um, in the cardiac mucosa length in these patients. And the potential mechanisms, uh, which are not particularly known but suggested at this time, uh, could include the following. So it could be an underlying dysmotility, which is known to occur in patients with obesity. It could also be related to transient relaxation of the LES, which could be a function of increased intragastric pressure, um, which occurs as a, a result of excess adipose tissue which is uh, transmitted from the uh, increased girth of the patient. And there could also be an impact from the presence of a hiatal hernia as well. In this particular patient population, in bariatric patients, over time, esophagitis can also develop. And so you can see from these pictures, uh, patients can actually develop grade C, grade D esophagitis, and if we're able to determine this before surgery, then it can actually help us to uh, determine which type of operation to do for our patients so we can be a little bit more um, prescriptive. As we know, bariatric surgery is one of the most effective methods of treating obesity. In this stampede study from the Cleveland Clinic, they demonstrated superiority of both sleeve gastrectomy and gastric bypass in getting rid of uh, weight-related comorbidities in these patients. Now, this study was not actually um, powered to distinguish between the two, but it did show that both operations are superior to medical therapy. And we also know that there are specific benefits to sleeve gastrectomy. And that's one of the reasons that it's become one of the most, if not the most, commonly performed procedure worldwide. But we do worry about one of our biggest concerns is that there is a potential for developing reflux after surgery. Different operations have variable outcomes with re reflux, but in this particular perspective analysis, they were able to demonstrate that all surgeries actually do have some benefit to patients, um, not to all patients, but to some patients, and that gastric bypass has actually uh, shown superiority in terms of symptom score for patients. But you will notice that it doesn't actually reduce symptoms to zero. And so for, even for patients who undergo gastric bypass, there is some level of reflux that can be experienced in these patients after surgery. In this randomized control, randomized control trial, um, they were also looking at specifically um, different outcomes for patients in terms of their comorbidities. And if you look at the subset of reflux, there is still demonstration of benefit from having gastric bypass. Again, it is superior in terms of remission of patient, patient reflux, so 60% versus 25%. And in fact, for patients who underwent sleeve gastrectomy, there is worsening of reflux, which is statistically significant, so 31% versus 6%. And there is also worsening of new onset reflux, again, more highly represented in sleeve patients. So what exactly is de novo reflux? Do we really understand this, this whole concept? And you'll find that some of the mechanisms which are believed to occur that cause uh, de novo reflux are similarly represented um, in just regular reflux after surgery. So it's the same theme here. 
And so that made us wonder if really there is de novo reflux or if it's just unmasked silent reflux. And so in this study, they tracked patients following those who um, had symptoms before and after surgery to see if it was the same patient who was actually complaining. And so you can see the cohort divided into three cohorts. I'm sorry, the study was divided into three cohorts. So there are patients who had no symptoms, then there are patients who had no reported symptoms but actually did have objective findings of, study, of uh, reflux, and then there were patients who were symptomatic, and this was all before surgery. And so if you follow these patients postoperatively over the course of about four years, you can see that they actually end up in different categories, each represented in all three. But ultimately, patients who reported symptoms after surgery did include a subset of patients who actually had silent reflux. And so they believe that this was potentially an unmasking of reflux that had been there initially and not just new onset reflux related to the surgery. And I think what we can take away from this as surgeons um, specifically is that simply because a patient does not report um, having reflux symptoms, we should not have a false sense of reassurance and we should actually investigate this further. And I think one of the speakers later today will be discussing this as well. So what exactly um, should help to guide us when we counsel our patients? Uh, you know, this is basically what I'm here to talk about. What are the predictors? Um, you know, how can we determine what's the best operation for each of our patients when they come to us complaining of certain symptoms? And so there isn't much in the literature published at this point, um, but there are some, some good studies to start us off. So the first one, uh, they were looking at uh, patients who underwent primary sleeve gastrectomy. It's a small cohort of patients, only 200, and they were reporting on symptoms that they experienced before and after surgery. And you can see that they were able to identify two potential contributors. The first was preoperative BMI, so patients who were heavier surprisingly had less uh, reflux, and patients who had more severe reflux while standing were actually noted to have more severe reflux after surgery. Now, again, it's a small study, and um, the effects are modest at best. They also were not able to identify an, any other variables that were contributing here. In a subsequent non-randomized study, they were looking this, at this point with patients who underwent a sleeve gastrectomy and gastric bypass. And again, they were using a comprehensive uh, assessment tool, so not only reports of symptoms, but looking at objective findings. And they found that in the sleeve gastrectomy patients, they were more likely um, to have persistent and de novo reflux after surgery. So again, gastric bypass is superior here. In their multivariate analysis, they were also able to identify four specific predictors. The first was sleeve gastrectomy technique. And you know, this makes sense to us because we know that there are certain anatomical considerations, you know, technical things that we do in the OR, um, for instance, uh, dissecting away from the angle of hiss um, that will help to mitigate reflux after surgery. So I don't think this is particularly surprising. Um, but there is a presence of preoperative esophagitis. And again, someone else will be talking about this later in, in the session, um, but I think it does uh, give pause to us. You know, So if patients are coming in complaining of, of reflux or maybe even not complaining of reflux, should we be doing up, upper endoscopy on these patients to look for esophagitis ahead of surgery? Uh, there's also a role with age. So there is a two-fold increase for every 10 life years for patients, um, so older patients are more likely to have reflux after surgery. They also found that postoperative hiatal hernia was identified as an independent predictor, and typically people are repairing these uh, hernias if they see them at the time of surgery, so hopefully you know, that will help to reduce the rate of post-op post hernias as well. So in summary, obesity um, we know is linked with reflux, we also know that bariatric surgery, although it is good, uh, is effective in reducing excess weight and also uh, improving comorbidities, in certain cases it has actually been linked to reflux after surgery, whether that's de novo or persistent reflux. And the predictors that we know of so far uh, likely include operative technique, the age of the patient, uh, the presence of esophageal uh, 
esophagitis, excuse me, and the presence of a post-operative hiatal hernia. Thank you. Thank you.